Several of the experiments that we run require a measurement of humidity. For example, the paper lab uh, requires knowing the humidity in the uh, room before taking the test. Uh, if you read the standards, you'll see that. So you need a way to measure the relative humidity. Now, the relative humidity is measured by two different temperatures, what's known as a dry bulb and a wet bulb temperature. And the easiest way to show you that is to show you a sling psychrometer and show you what, exactly what that means. You'll see I have two thermometers. One is just a regular one sitting in the air, but the other one is wrapped with a piece of uh, roping that has been moistened, and this end cap contains a fair amount of water. So that's known as the wet bulb temperature. And it differs from the dry bulb temperature. There we go. Is when we start, we pull this out, and we bring those thermometers to equilibrium. And how do we do that? This is the sling part of it. We hold it by the handle here, leave the thermometers, and we sling for about two minutes. Very nice exercise. It doesn't matter which way you go, you can change direction, but you're supposed to do this for about two minutes. Now, I did it earlier, so it's already pretty well set. And when you're done, you have to read the two temperatures, and that may be very hard to see, and they will be different because of the uh, wet bulb and dry bulb. And I can see that they're about five degrees difference. This one is about 68, and the uh, dry bulb is about 73. So what we then do is this middle chart is how I read the, uh, the relative humidity. And I do that by getting it to go in, which sometimes it fights me a little bit. There it goes. And I say, all right, my wet bulb was about 65. My dry bulb was about 73. So I push the 73 up to the 65, like that. And then right over here at the Y, I read the relative humidity about 63%. And that's how relative humidity is measured. Now, on the TV shows and the weather report, they usually just report the relative humidity. But you get it by getting the dry and the wet bulb. And you can also get uh, other terms as well. Now, a slightly easier way to do this is you can measure the relative humidity using a electronic psychrometer. You'll notice that I have filaments there and the way this works let me back up a little bit is you just again you wave it in the air for about half a minute or so just to let it settle and when it settles down you can then read the humidity right off and you'll see it reads a little differently from the sling psychrometer at the moment because i haven't equalized it out but this electronic version is very clever but it doesn't really show you what's going on whereas this one is very nice because you see exactly how the calculations are made using this thing called the wet bulb temperature, which is a saturated temperature of 100% moisture in the air. You know that when you get to 100%, it rains. Why is that important for our testing? Well, something like paper absorbs moisture, and the strength of this paper is in part dependent upon the humidity in the air. So uh, the specifications are the humidity has to be under 50%, uh, for it to be a completely valid test. If not, you're going to be reading a little low. But here in the lab, we don't have that luxury, but at least now we can measure humidity using these very simple tools. Didn't want to let you go without taking a couple of minutes uh, to show you a bit more about that wet bulb and dry bulb temperature. I teach over in the HVAC uh, curriculum from time to time when they need an extra and we cover this a lot because this really is kind of an introduction into the whole theory of how HVAC works heating venting and air conditioning so we talk about the uh, psychochromatic chart which was invented by a Willis Carrier and you can see uh, the dates there so if you are astute you know that uh, Carrier Corporation was named after him uh, here's a nice picture of him uh, about the time he presented his landmark paper in 1911. Um, and he was the founder of the Carrier Corporation. At the time, he was just working on a problem of uh, overheating in a room. Uh, 
too much moisture, too much heat. People were not able to work and function. And he uh, came up with the uh, modern air conditioner and made a small fortune uh, introducing it into people's homes as well as businesses. So he uh, uh, did very, very well for himself and uh, really kind of set down uh, the importance of how this all ties together. What we were just talking about with the sling psychrometer there. Um, he set down a paper in 1911 at the ASME conference. Most people say it is the foundations of modern HVAC, uh, that it is probably one of the single most important papers presented at the uh, ASME conferences uh, in the last hundred years. And it is something that you can read. It's uh, there uh, on Wikipedia. Uh, in total, it's not that long. Uh, it's actually not terribly difficult to read either. He's got some math in there, but uh, not too bad. And it's it's just so brilliantly written. And yeah, I just want you to know that that's there. And let's just take a quick look. Um, this is the chart he came up with. Um, there's several forms of it in different units. Uh, I'm not going to try to explain everything that's going on here. I don't expect you to be able to, you know, do all that. But um, I wanted to show you what he did that makes this thing so smart. You know, uh, in graphics, uh, we teach that a, a chart is a good chart if it conveys information quickly and usefully. And this is a chart that does exactly that. Because along the bottom here is uh, the dry bulb temperature, in this case in Fahrenheit. And the wet bulb temperature is displayed on these angled lines. So you remember we had uh, about uh, 73 degrees dry bulb and we had about 68 um, wet bulb or yeah about that and we can come up and say 65, 66, 67, 68, come down to the 73 line, and right where my cursor is pointing is uh, the spot that is on this chart that's from those two temperatures, the wet bulb and dry bulb. And what's really neat with that is now that you have that spot, you can just read right off these curved lines are the lines of humidity and you can see that we're at about you know 68 70 percent humidity and then even neater is i can run across get the dew point temperature which is the temperature at which things condensate i can roll up the um, chart here and along this line, I read this term known as the enthalpy, which is the energy. And you say, well, who cares? Well, here's why you care. You know, normally, you come in here and you say, okay, here's 50% relative humidity, about 75 degrees. This is considered an ideal set point for both heating and cooling. And so you say, okay, 75 degrees, 50% humidity. But outside, in a hot summer day when it's 90 and it's about 80% humidity, you're way up here. So you got to go from up here to down here. It's not just temperature. Yeah, you only got 15 degrees to the temperature. But you have all this humidity, which is moisture, which is measured over on this far right scale. And the difference between the two energy levels is the amount of energy that your air conditioner is going to need. So right on this chart... We can, if we know any two properties, say the dry bulb and the wet bulb, we can get humidity, we can get the dew point, we can get the enthalpy, we can get the grains of moisture, we can actually calculate on a per pound of air basis exactly how much energy has to be removed. And what you've just done is essentially set down the foundations of uh, HVAC and that entire branch of uh, thermodynamics and fluid mechanics, which uh, for those of you going on to your four-year degree, will be doing your junior, senior year. So 
it really is kind of amazing how much information's on this chart. 